JBN, we keep you informed. Woodstock residents want to break through in murder case. Residents of Woodstock, near Claremont in St. Anne, are eagerly awaiting a breakthrough in the June 21 murder of community member, 54-year-old farmer Donovan Davis. Efforts on Wednesday to get an update from the St. Anne police proved unsuccessful. But a resident of Claremont said that word on the ground is that nothing has changed since investigations began. The people them need to know something because we know him as a decent man, he said. Police reports are that Davis was at home with his 15-year-old daughter when a lone gunman entered the house through the back door leading to her room. The gunman inquired of her the whereabouts of her father and was escorted to another section of the house where Davis was doing repairs in a bathroom. When he opened the bathroom door, the gunman immediately opened fire hitting Davis through the upper section of the body before escaping. Davis was rushed to the St. Hans Bay Regional Hospital where he was pronounced dead. The daughter was not harmed. The police later removed three empty spent casings and blood samples from the scene. The killing further pushed the murder rate in St. Anne for 2020 above that of last year. In the May release of the All-Ireland Crime Statistics, St. Anne showed the highest percentage increase on the island, that of 85.7% with 26 deaths being recorded for the period January 1 to May 10, 2020, as against 14 for the corresponding period last year. There was also a 90% increase in shootings, the figure moving from 10 to 19. There were also increases in robbery and rape, but break-in and larceny recorded decrease. During a visit to the community, residents described the deceased as a farmer who troubled no one and expressed shock at his murder. Me never even hear any gunshot, one resident said. A long time when I have something like this happen. The house where Davis was killed remains closed as his daughter has gone to live with relatives since the incident. Illegal guns seized in Trelawney. Man arrested. A team of officers attached to the Falmouth police arrested and charged 30-year-old Odin Allen with illegal possession of firearm following an operation in Granville District in Trelawney on Thursday. It is reported that about 6.10 a.m., the team carried out a search at a premises in the area when Allen was seen throwing an object through a door. The object was retrieved and found to be a .38 revolver. He was subsequently arrested and charged. His court date has not yet been finalized. Gunmen shoot security guard. A security guard who was shot and injured during a daring daylight robbery at a Chinese-operated supermarket in downtown Montego Bay on Thursday is now battling for life at the Cornwall Regional Hospital. The guard, who hails from Farm Pen, Landilo, Westmoreland, underwent surgery and is now in the intensive care unit. Reports by the Barnet Street Police are that shortly after 12.30 p.m. on Thursday, two men wearing masks entered the supermarket and held one of the operators at gunpoint. They then demanded money, but before the operator could comply, the security intervened, and he and one of the gunmen got involved in a tussle. The guard was shot multiple times. The men then ran from the supermarket and escaped in the direction of King Street. It is still unclear if the robbers managed to escape with any cash. Mr. Me McCarr just flew up a passenger. I'm ready for drive out at the supermarket yard with me your pure gunshot. Next thing me know is that every passenger start bail out of my car. They might run gone left them goods in the trunk. Me never have no other choice but for run left the car too, one taxi operator said. Next thing me know is that me see the boy, them a bus shot for clear the crowd so them can make them escape and everybody have to run for them life. He said that after the robbers escaped, persons rushed the security guard to hospital. Boy, me said this is not real. Imagine you have a police station right at Church Street corner, just a few foot from here, sir. And the man, them still have managed to carry out them kind of robbery in a broad daylight without them a get catch. The police, them need to pull up their socks, the taxi operator said earlier this year. Popular Montego Bay Chinese business operator Kenneth Lee and his personal security guard were both shot and killed. They were robbed of millions of dollars in broad daylight as they pulled up outside a bank, which is located on a neighboring street where Thursday's incident took place. Them deal with we good. Greenwich Town residents commend security forces. A woman identified as Dacia Pucci Lawrence of Fourth Street, Greenwich Town in Southwest St. Andrew was taken into police custody by the police on Thursday 
following a protracted search of the premises. A day after Prime Minister Andrew Holness announced the zone of special operations for the community. Lawrence was eventually bailed and is booked to attend the corporate area parish court on Monday, August 3, to answer to a charge of using indecent language to members of the security forces who carried out the search. She was transported to the Hunts Bay Police Station, even though residents of the area pleaded with the commanding officer to exercise the leniency on the grounds that are head no good. However, he refused, insisting that she must know how to talk to people. Earlier, Pucci had been placed inside the pickup van by the officers escorting her. However, upon realizing this, the commanding officer sternly directed that she be taken out and placed inside in the back of the vehicle. Handcuffed with her hands behind her, the detainee was unable to help herself until the cuffs were opened and she was able to scramble up with some difficulty into the vehicle, unassisted, after which she was handcuffed to a section of the pickup in a seated position. Other residents had waited for more than 45 minutes. Their curiosity peaked when a member of the Caribbean search team came out for a bolt cutter, adding to the crowbars others had in their possession. However, no locks or bolts were cut or doors priced open. In fact, the people whose homes were searching their presence commended the members of the joint military police team comprising mostly men for what they termed exemplary treatment. Then deal with with good was a general consensus. A number of women explained that after conducting searches, the officers exercised care in placing objects exactly how they had been found. A water gun was the only thing found up to that point in a search which involved members of at least five branches within the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, along with members of the Jamaica Defense Force, JDF. Those agencies were the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigation Branch, the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch, St. Andrew South Special Operations, the Caribbean Search Team, and the Motorized Patrol Division. Hope to the rescue, sisters living in squalor, get new houses. Three sisters, along with a combined total of 12 children who were living in squalor, are now the recipients of the Tenement Upgrade Housing Development Project in Anata Bay, St. Mary, which is part of the government's Housing Opportunity Production and Employment Hope Program. They are Suzette, Cadian, and Simone Peter, whose worsening living conditions first came to the attention of Member of Parliament MP for St. Mary South East, Dr. Norman Dunn who was reportedly moved with compassion. On Thursday, Prime Minister Andrew Holness handed over the three-bedroom units during a ribbon-cutting ceremony. He was accompanied by Danville Walker, National Director of the New Social Housing Program, Audrey Sewell, Permanent Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister, and Dunn. This is a facility that anywhere would be rated as first-class, strong, well-built, and we believe they are coming at a reasonable price. Today, I am particularly proud of this project, Holness said. I am sure the Peter sisters will appreciate it. They may not be in a position to express their appreciation, but you don't need to tell me thanks. According to the Prime Minister, the government had set aside $1 billion to construct more than 1,000 units across the country. However, he said that the budget had to be cut owing to the COVID pandemic. The keys of the new housing units, with bathroom, kitchen, and a living room, were handed over to the three sisters. Each unit is built with a septic tank and connected to potable water and electricity supply. The Onota Bay Tenement upgrade was constructed at a cost of $22.7 million. In his remarks, Don urged the participants to take care of the facility, which will provide them with total relaxation and comfort. I am forever thankful that I was able to assist with providing these units to those sisters, he said. It was the worst state of squalor that I've ever seen, and the children were affected. I made the necessary representation, and fortunately, they were considered. Now they are able to enjoy a more comfortable environment, the MP pointed out. Mocha could make second attempt to have Grindley Badu Singh face charges in Jamaica. The major organized crime and anti-corruption agency Mocha could make another push to have former Petrodram executives Floyd Grindley and Percival Badu Singh extradited to Jamaica to face charges over their alleged roles in the messy Petrojam saga 
after their initial attempt fizzed nearly two years ago. In the late 2018, MOCA had put forward its case to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, or DPP, which ruled that the evidence was not strong enough to win over the authorities in the United States where the men are reportedly based. In a nine-page January 20 opinion, the ODPP informed the anti-corruption agency that the file needed more work and outlined what would be required. Although MOCA has not yet put forward another request, the agency said that it was having ongoing dialogue with the DPP's office with a view to concluding the investigation. At this time, that is the extent of the comment we'll make on the matter, said Colonel Desmond Edwards, MOCA's Director General. Both Grindley, who served as general manager at the state-owned oil refinery, and Badu Singh, chairman, were asked in 2018 as a multi-million dollar corruption scandal engulfed Petrodram with allegations of irregularities, nepotism, and cronyism. It also topped then Energy Minister Andrew Wheatley, a loyalist of Prime Minister Andrew Holness. Last week, the nation's chief prosecutor, Paula Llewellyn, said that the extradition unit in her office, headed by Jeremy Taylor, thoroughly assessed the file presented by MOCA and found that there was insufficient material to make a viable extradition request at that time. A request without more is not sufficient, she said. Llewellyn said one of the sticking points was that Jamaica would have had a hard time proving the double criminality principle, where the offenses the men were being sought for must be recognized in law in both countries. The 1991 extradition treaty between Jamaica and the U.S. also said extraditable offenses must be punishable by imprisonment or other forms of detention for a period of more than one year. In addition, a request must be supported by, among other things, an arrest warrant. But Llewellyn said the inadequate material for MOCA meant a warrant was a long way off. When you're asking for extradition, you have to deal with the central authority in the United States. You have to make sure that the material that you present shows a clear, clear case in respect of the ingredients of any possible offense, the DPP said, adding that there must be a reasonable prospect for conviction. The DPP said her office has been working with MOCA to facilitate the investigation. Last week, the Integrity Commission, in its annual report for 2019-2020, said it provided MOCA with information on statutory declarations for two public officers. The report also made several stinging conclusions about Grindley, Badu Singh, and some of their former colleagues. It questioned whether Grindley was strategically placed in his position as general manager, to support corruption-enabling mechanisms at Petrojam. It added that there was evidence that Grindley, along with ex-human resources head Yolanda Ramarak and former procurement head Ronique Budram Ford, were involved in a conspiracy to defraud Petrojam and the government with the hosting of birthday parties on tax dollars for Wheatley and Badu Singh. Gridley was also accused of presiding over a hiring process for Ramarak that was marred by nepotism, gross improprieties and irregularities. The Integrity Commission also concluded that Grindley improperly inserted himself in Petrojam's donation of $2 million to the Monroe College Old Boys Association. He's a past student of the St. Elizabeth-based school. Badu Singh, meanwhile, was accused of engaging in acts of corruption in relation to 27 overseas trips he planned and later claimed reimbursements for although they had nothing to do with Petrojam. When the scandal broke, Badu Singh, who has disputed the allegations, refunded Petrojam approximately U.S. $57,000. But the Integrity Commission said the reimbursements do not relieve him of accountability, pointing out that there is evidence of dishonesty and a breach of duty. It said those acts were willful because Badu Singh claimed he was going on Petrojam-related trips but would have been aware that he did not in fact attend such meetings. Grinsley, the report said, breached the law when he authorized the reimbursements. Badu Singh had also approved a $40 million donation to the Scientific Research Council, which has been deemed a conflict of interest because the council's executive director, Dr. Cliff Riley, was not only Badu Singh, academic affiliate, but a close friend. The report said action could be brought against the former chairman, whose two-year stint began in 2016 for misconduct in public office. Both Badu Singh and Grindley have been referred to the Director of Corruption Prosecution for possible criminal actions. 
Some of the findings in the two published reports were redacted, which a former senior prosecutor in the ODPP said could mean several things, including that prosecutions were eminent and the commission would not want to prejudice court proceedings. It would also mean investigations were ongoing. A third report on the Petrodram investigation is outstanding from the Integrity Commission. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.